everyone, in this video we're going to talk about when we use the distributive property, making sure that we combine like terms correctly. And like terms are terms that contain same variables with all the same powers, just like it says here. So, uh, for example, you know, something like 5x and 3x, those are like terms. I can add them together. Just like I can add five cats and three cats, five cats and three cats would give me eight cats, right? So in the same way, five X plus three X, because these have the same variable, um, and notice the power is one on each of these, so I can just combine those as like terms. If I had something like five X squared plus three X, now these are different types of objects, right? An X square term and an X term are not the same thing. I can't add those together and say I get eight of something else, right? Um, just like we wouldn't add five cats and three dogs and say we get eight cat dogs or something like that, right? So this is as simple as this statement gets because we just simply cannot combine the like terms. Looking at a few examples of this, so first let's distribute and then we can see maybe combining the like terms. So when we say the distributive property, we mean taking the multiplication of three on the parentheses and simply distributing that three multiplication into each term in the parentheses. So here we will get three times x will give us three x, three times negative five, positive times negative is negative, and three times five is 15. Over here, plus, we will have distributing the eight to the x and the two, we'll have an eight x, and then eight times two will give us 16. So what we end up with four terms, we have some x terms, these are like terms, so I can combine those, so three x's plus eight x's will give us 11 x. And then the numbers, the constants, are like terms as well. So negative 15 plus 16, I get one more than negative 15, so that gives me plus one, and that would be our answer. I have all of my x terms combined, I have all of my constant terms combined. So after we distribute, just making sure that terms that are like become combined, and those that are not do not. For the next one, here I distribute the four. I'm going to go ahead and keep everything in parentheses because when we have a negative out front, it's definitely going to matter. So getting in the habit of distributing the 4 really into the parentheses. 4 times 5x would give us 20x's, and 4 times 3 will give us 12. Plus, so now distributing my 2, notice I have to distribute my 2 into 3 terms in the second quantity here. So 2 times x squared just gives us 2x squared. 2 times negative 3x will give us negative 6x. And 2 times positive 1 will give us a positive 2. Okay, so now we simply need to combine like terms. Um, if I look at, I'm just going to sort of organize this by going the highest power first. So I look at the highest power term would be my x square term. I don't have any other x square terms as I look at all of these. So that 2x square term is as simple as it's going to get. There's nothing to combine with it. If I look at my x terms, so I have an x term here. Uh, this 12 has no x in it. The 2 has no x in it. So this negative 6x is the only other thing that's like with the 20x. So 20x minus 6x is going to give us 14x. So that's our next term. Remember that terms are always separated by plus or minus. And then here I have a plus 12 and a plus 2. So 12 plus positive 2 is going to give us 14 there. And now all of our terms are combined as much as possible. Okay, next one we have a 7x to distribute into the first quantity. So just be careful with this, 7x times another x, x times x will make that an x squared term. 7x times negative 3, so positive times negative gives us negative, and 7x times 3 would give us 21x's. Be careful, this is really a negative 6x that we're distributing, so you can either leave the negative out and only distribute the 6x in, or you can think everything times negative 6x, but don't count that negative twice. So if I leave the minus, and I distribute 6x only, 
then 6 times 3 is 18, and x times x is x squared. Uh, 6x times the plus 9 will give us plus 54, that's 6 times 9, and it will be an x term as well. So if I leave the minus outside and just distribute the 6x, that's what this looks like. Now be careful with your signs. This and this are like terms. I have x squared terms, but we want to think through the subtract. So 7x squared minus 18x squared. We keep the kind of term it is. It is an x squared term, and we just think about the coefficients, the numbers in front of the variables. So 7 minus 18 would make that negative 11 for that term. A similar thing for the x terms now. I have an x term here, and I have an x term here, and those are in common, but I want to think through the subtract. So I have, they're both x terms, so I'm going to end up with an x term. I have negative 21x minus a 54x. So negative 21 minus 54. You might have to get out your calculator possibly for that one, but that's going to give us a negative 75x for that one. Okay, and next one here, notice I have a quantity with two terms in it times another quantity with two terms in it. So we just need to make sure that every term in the first quantity hits every term in the second quantity, and then we're good. So if I distribute my 2x first, so 2x times another x would give us 2x squared. 2x times negative 4 would give us negative 8x. So I've distributed the 2x into everything over here, and I'm going to distribute the 3 into everything over here. So 3 times x, that'll give us plus 3x for the next term. And then 3 times a negative 4 will give us a negative 12. And if you'll notice with the four terms that we have now, after distributing everything, you'll see that these terms here are like terms. So I'm going to go ahead and copy down my 2x squared. That won't change. Uh, count your x's. You have negative 8 plus 3 of them. So negative 8 plus 3 will give you negative 5x's. And then your negative 12 has nothing to combine with as a like term, so it will stay also just like the 2x squared did in the front. All right, here's another one. A little bit more to do here. So you can see I have to distribute three times. So I have 4x times x. That'll give me 4x squared. 4x times negative 1 would just change the sign, so that makes it minus 4x. I'm going to do this one a little bit different. I'm going to actually not keep the minus out front and distribute 2. I'm actually going to distribute negative 2 into all of these, and I'm going to remove my parentheses. Let's see if we can follow along with that. So negative 2 times x squared would be negative 2x squared. Now a negative 2 times a positive 5x, a negative times positive is negative. 2 times 5x would give us 10x. And then negative 2 times negative 3, the last one there, would give us a plus 6. Now we just distribute the 9 into the last one, and then we have all our terms, and we'll have to look at combining. So 9 times x squared, so we get plus 9x squared, and 9 times 1 gives us plus 9. That one's a little bit shorter. So now I have to just make sure that I combine all my like terms. So I have a 4x squared, I have another x squared term there and there. So we just need to figure out how many we have. So it's going to be an x squared term for sure. You keep the, the kind of term it is, but we'll do 4 minus 2 plus 9. So 4 minus 2 would give me 2. And then 2 plus 9 would give me 11, so I have 11x squared. Uh, next, let's do the x terms. So here I have a negative 4x and a negative 10x, and those are my x terms. So you keep the type of term, so it's going to be an x term. Negative 4 minus 10 is going to give us negative 14x. And then the numbers, the constants, we have... Uh, a, ne a positive 6 and a positive 9, so plus 6, plus 9. Together that will be plus 15. 
So we have all our terms combined, all our x squareds combined, all our x terms combined, and our constants combined there.